Welcome everybody. It's lovely to have you all here. Um, this is um, the first in our series on um, of artist talks for uh, Onyx Fine Arts Collective uh, artists. The, the first online, um, and uh, I'm really excited about about doing this. Um, so uh, just some housekeeping things. We are recording this and, and we'll put it up on the YouTube channel when we're, when we're all done so other folks can view. Um, so I just want to let everybody know that your, your lovely faces and, and eventually voices will also be on here. Also, we ask that you keep your microphones off until we start the Q&A. At that point, of course, Everybody can turn on their mics so we can hear your questions. Um, I'm Lola Peters, but you guys all know that. I'm saying that for the YouTube video uh, on the board of uh, Onyx Fine Arts Collective. And today we, um, we thought, you know, COVID has got us all under lockdown and it's been months now and we're all going a little bit stir crazy. Um, and on top of that, uh, we're dealing with this insane election that's happening. And because that's just not enough, uh, we have racism run rampant in our society. Um, so people are just trying to stay alive with, a, with a, an immense desperation. So it seemed really appropriate that now would be a time to call on someone <laughs> who deals with those things uh, using art um, and who is an art therapist. And we're really, really lucky to have with us um, Sherry Stevens, who is uh, an art therapist and, and who's going to spend some time telling us about what that means and, and what she does and, and how art informs is the core of, of how she does art therapy, obviously art therapy, uh, but how important that is and, and what, what she does and how she does it. Um, so with that, I'm going to let Sherry tell you about herself and about her work. Go for it, Sherry, and welcome and thank you for doing this for us today. Okay, thank you. Can everybody hear me all right? I'm going to um, have my PowerPoint up here. Everybody can hear me? I can't. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. You. Thank you. Perfect. Yes. So I'm going to start with an overview of mental health counseling with art therapy. And I, first, I want to introduce myself. I'm Cherie Stevens, as you know. And um, I have a background as an artist. And I have recently opened up, like the last four years, my private practice in art therapy. So this is going to be an overview of um, of art therapy, and uh, also. Hold on a second. Do that. Oh, that's something interesting happening here. All right. This is the first slide. The first slide wasn't up for some reason. All right. All right. Here is our focus. And uh, so I'll just give an overview of art therapy for those who are interested or have some curiosity about it. And then I will go into just an overview of what I'm working as an artist and um, through the lens of, of um, you know, self-care and responding to our times. And then we'll finish with an experiential. Um, it's a process art. And one of the things that's really important with um, art therapy is that you do not have to be an artist to do process art. It is not about product. It's just about the experience. So I invite everyone who is open and willing to give it a try. And um, don't be afraid, there's no right or wrong. 
and you don't have to show what you've done if you don't want to, but to just see what it feels like and join us in this art project at the end. So, first I'll start out with the mental health counseling with art therapy. Now, um, art therapy is an integrative mental health and human service profession and it's used to um, enrich the lives, promote healing, um, tie communities together through active art making, the creative process, um, and applying psychology and psych psychiatric theory, uh, human experience, social experience, and um, all of that embedded in the therapeutic relationship. Now for most programs, it's, a, it's essential that you have a master's or a doctorate in mental health counseling from, a, um, from an Association of Art Therapy of America approved program. And my degree is from um, Antioch University, Seattle. And also you need a state license. So it's like a dual degree. You have a, a master of mental health counseling. And in addition to that, there is the specialty of art therapy. So I wear both those hats in my practice. Um, although, and it's also important to keep in mind that although art making is inherently therapeutic on many different levels, we've all experienced that as those of us who have done art or have looked at art or who are artists. But it's best to keep in mind that you have to be credentialed art therapist in order to legally conduct what we call art therapy. So, and I can try to explain more of that in, in going on if, if you would like. Um, art therapy facilitated by a professional art therapist effectively supports personal and relational treatment goals. So the situation will be a, a client who has a um, emotional or um, mental health issue, um, might be going through crises, might be experiencing trauma or loss or grief, something of that nature, or perhaps has a growth goal um, to um, overcome perhaps a um, disability, um, a developmental disability. Um, so art therapy can be used in the therapeutic setting to improve cognitive sensory motor functions, foster self-esteem, awareness, cultivate emotional resilience, promote insight, enhance social skills, reduce and resolve conflicts and distress, and advance societal and ecologic, ecological change. I do weave in some equal therapy into my practice, as well as um, taking consideration what social things are impacting my client. It, it, it doesn't help if someone is hungry and cold and they don't have some place to live. And I say, well, let's sit down and we'll talk about how you feel. I am not a social worker, but I am, very, very aware, aware of what my client's day-to-day -day needs are. And those day-to-day -day social needs also impact our health, our well-being, our mental health, our emotional health. The next slide. Um, it's a form of mental health counseling and it uses therapeutic art activities. So each activity is tailored to what the need my client presents. So whatever their conflict is, what their history is, um, what we've worked on before will lend itself to um, an art therapeutic intervention that we will do in the studio. And it's important to keep in mind, as I mentioned before, that it is not product oriented. Anyone can participate in the experience. You don't have to be an artist or have skill. 
In fact, sometimes I have to spend time helping an artist get past their, their process in order to experience art therapy on a more intuitive uh, um, level. It's not about what goes down on the paper or what it looks like. It, the process happens within and in, and in the mind. So we use a variety of materials. Um, I have a kill here. Sometimes we work in clay, um, paper making, drawing, painting, of course. Um, sometimes it's uh, collage. There's just um, a large gamut. And like I said, with echotherapy, um, we even take walks out in nature and um, create echo art um, in the yard or in, or in the neighboring park. Um, and I mentioned some of the things that people come, they come with grief loss and struggling with trauma, depression. Um, as those of you who are artists, you probably have experienced doing your art seems to tap into a different side of your experience and it brings in different ideas and solutions. Well, through art therapy, even people who aren't artists can take advantage of that and can experience using the creative side of their brain to help problem solve, to help their, them heal, and to work through any issues that are um, holding them back in their lives. Um, and then I don't exclusively work with children and youth. I work with all age levels myself, but different um, therapists will have a specialty with a particular age range. And um, one of the things that attracted me to art therapy is that because it is using the creative side and it's not using, it's not heavy on the verbal, it's not about talking so much, it's not the talking therapy. We have a visual conversation the client and I, and it's not, so if a client has difficulty communicating because of developmental issue or a language issue, art therapy oftentimes can come in and help and alleviate symptoms for a client and bypass the need for um, language fluency. Um, now I'm going to go on to current projects that I'm working on and I'll share with you how I've tied in some of my background, my personal background and my therapeutic background into my work. I am currently working on a series, well actually I've completed the oil on canvas series of Dancing with the Ancestors. Um, I had done two paintings about four years ago and then because of COVID this spring I was able to complete 14. So now I have um, a total of 16 canvases done and I have a sample here. You see um, the crow and I have two images and you can see on the left um, there's just the crow figure with the sky and then on the right you see this kind of a there's a halo and so this is sort of the core of what the series is about dancing with the ancestors um, you see below it says in all african cultures birds are associated with souls and i'm quoting um symbols um african symbols that's a particular book that i've i've used that that i've you know relied on to help me with this to get the imagery some of the imagery so the theme of of different birds and as carrying souls um, is weaves itself through these paintings and they have these halos and the halos are made up of different significant african motifs and symbols and in this way, I've been able to express 
my own sensibility as a person, person of African American, Afro West Indian background of the diaspora, but also tie in my my roots in the um, Orthodox um, Christianity, my background in that regard, um, and to synthesize that with us as community our connectedness as community, especially during this time when we're so, have to be so far apart from each other, to keep in mind, and I have a, a quote up here from my notes, because I've been keeping notes while I've been working on these paintings. During these times of COVID-19 and the multiple injustices against the sanctity of life, as evidenced by the murder of black lives, I extol the value of life through our eternal connection to our ancestors, while powers and principalities endeavor to debase. I endeavor to lift up and revere through the Dancing with the Ancestors series. They are my prayers, these paintings are my prayers, my song, and my meditation. And so here's a close up. And you see this particular image is um, a shield, a shield form. Um, and I also list the other um, works in progress and we'll go into that. The Dancing with the Ancestors, Halo Mandalas. So I'm taking the Halo Mandalas that I've used in the paintings and then I'm moving further and doing more things with them and then art, art therapy resource packets. I'll just finish with that. So that first painting, you saw the shield. And so here is um, the sketch from the original Ashanti chest plate. And then um, you see it that's gone through a modification for a youth coloring sheet that I did for an activity. And then down here on the lower left is an adult color sh coloring sheet version. So I'm taking each one of the halos I've created for my um, 14 paintings and turning each one of them into uh, an adult coloring sheet that will be placed in a, a booklet. And each one of them of course will be based on certain symbols um, from Africa with specific meanings, which will be a part of the information for each one of the coloring sheets as a way of kind of sending that same message um, out there for others to enjoy and to, to use and learn. Um, finally, I have Equinox, some people might have recognized it, it hung in Onyx last spring. Um, but I use it because I also intend to pick out a certain number of the adult coloring sheets and then um, fully render it in my own, my own way, in my own style um, later on. And the art therapy resource packs, and this is something that um, truly is synthesizing myself as an artist, as a therapist. I want to create these, I'm calling it Afrotropic wasn't able to find that word anywhere, but that's the word I'm using. Um, it's not all one word, which is Afro Afrotropic, which refers to an area, but Afrotropic meaning leaning toward Africa um, and not Afrocentric, which I feel is even more embedded in African culture. At least that's my interpretation of it. So these would be stories and directives in, in packets that can be used by um, counselors and therapists working with children of color, but particularly um, for African American children. Um, there, there are not too many of us who are in this field. Um, we really do need more people of color in the field of, of mental health counseling. Um, but in the meantime, I'm thinking in terms of putting together these packets where they will weave story and activities and directives, um, desirable outcomes for um, 
young people and also tie in societal and justice issues so that the child is held, is considered a whole person, their health, physical, mental, spiritual, and social is considered in these, um, these packets. And then the last uh, project that I'm working on is I'm creating a course, a class, a four, four part course. Um, it's going to be um, launched with the MindSource Center. And then um, ultimately it will also be um, provided or offered at um, Seattle um, Foundation for their, for their employees. So this is a online class. It is a therapeutic kind of uh, means of safely, carefully walking people through healthy steps to examine their own implicit bias, but also um, unresolved trauma. It's not just for people who are white, it's for all people. All of us need help to sort out what goes within us and, um, and how to communicate with each other safely, especially in the workplace. So this is targeted toward how to interact in the workplace and talk about these issues and to continue that work of becoming more um, aware of what's going on and how do you process those emotions. So this course is, is targeted on that. It, it's to help people have some skills. It weaves in art therapy. It weaves in um, journaling to safely process one's emotions and um, hopefully give people a chance to practice talking with each other and safely, compassionately, um, and carefully so that in the workplace, we want people of color to feel able and brave enough to say what's going on or we all remain ignorant if that goes on yet it should never be on the shoulders of those of us who are of color to carry this weight and to do all the learning and teaching absolutely not but we need to feel empowered to have a voice in the workplace at the same time um, people white people need to have a chance to examine themselves and to go through that work and do that work safely within themselves and to keep growing and to feel that they can be their own leaders in this regard. So I am happy to answer more questions about this, but um, we're in the process of building this course and um, around November, we'll probably have our first uh, launch. So now I want to present the art therapy um, experiential. I have here a directive, so I'll give you a taste of what an um, art therapy directive would be like. But this is what um, we call a process art. It's just process art. So it's like you take something in, like you've been taking in my presentation, and I thank you very much for that. And process everything you've heard. I will give a prompt. You can take a look at it, think about it, and just take your pencil, pen, um, paintbrush, whatever you have to hand, and just put whatever comes out the end, let it come out and just put it down there and just respond to um, the prompt. So here's the prompt. And it is one of the symbols that um, have such a particular deep meaning that was used in my series. And so I present it to you here. It is called the Pampasi, um, Pampamsi, sorry, um, represents the strength and indestructibility of the community. And I felt it was a perfect one for us today because we are community and we're coming together as community. And keep in mind, the tenets of art therapy, there is no wrong, it's no right, it's just what comes out, it's just a response, and you can share what you've done if you'd like to, but you don't have to. 
You can take the shape and work with it or just the idea. Um, all right. So, so we'll have some time. Yeah, we'll have time. You can work on it while we're talking. We're going to answer some questions. I'm going to have some questions. Lola's going to ask me some questions. And during that time, you can listen and, and um, work on your response to, to the symbol of Pampamsi. And uh, yeah, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sherry. This has really been helpful. Um, <clears throat> so one of the questions I have is, if, if I um, come to you and I say, um, this isolation is just kicking my butt, mm -hmm. um, what, what, what would you do? What would you do to, to start off on, on a session? What would a session look like with you? All right, so if someone were to contact me and say that they just aren't able to, um, they're having trouble with the isolation, they feel separate from everybody, they aren't able to make those normal connections that they were able to do before and they were having really trouble with it. Um, it would depend on whether I could meet with them online or in person. I do see clients um, individually in my studio. There's enough space, there is airflow, and there is uh, um, masks and COVID protection here. So we can safely sit here as well. If the client can come in, that alone will help some. Um, otherwise, we'll meet online. And um, the first step would be to, of course, do an intake, have an idea of their background. Um, what is the nature of their isolation? I would have to go into the family. Are the family far away? Um, and there are a lot of people who are isolated because the family in, are in another state and there isn't anyone that they're allowed to have within their bubble here. Um, and that is a, a huge issue. So um, I would need to find out information. Who are their contacts? Who are their friends? Do they have friends? Um, and then talk about how we can support and strengthen this. Um, and one of the first things I would think I would want to handle is find out what their interests are, uh, encourage them to hook into online groups such as Black, Art, Black Artists Connecting Online and um, making connections that way. And also with the art therapy directives, I would target um, helping the client find ways to alleviate the stress and anxiety that isolation causes. So, so you uh, used the, the term art directives before and you kind of used it when you gave everybody the instructions on how to, or the instruction on the little exercise they're doing right now. Yes. Well, tell me what that term means. I'm not clear on what, what that is. Well, um, there are different words for using the same thing. Okay. Um, and art directive is one that I, I tend to use. And essentially what it is, is a instructions to draw or create something on for um, in my, my studio will be a piece of paper or whatever material that's provided um, and to respond to that. Now, um, to give you a little background about myself as a therapist, I am person-centered. And what that means is that the goals of the client are uppermost. So I will pull out different ideas to present to the client based on the client's needs. I, I don't have a system that I stick to that the client has to fit into in order to come out the other end. So I will, um, suggest something 
and um, I'll say, if you feel up to it, let's, why don't we do some drawing? Um, how about this? I always present it as an option for the client because being person-centered, it needs to feel right and it needs to resonate, resonate as true for the client. And if that feels like something that's pulling them in the direction they want to go in, then um, we, you know, they, they'll work on that, that um, directive, which is um, directions. You know, it might be draw this or color that, or when you feel um, this way or that way, what would those lines and shapes feel like? You know, what would they look like on the paper? It, it, it's so completely tailored to what's happening with the client at that moment. You know, it's hard to get it um, more detailed, but does that help to ex explain? Yeah, and I, I guess because I, what I was wondering is, you know, how how would coming to you be different than going to a, a regular to an, 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 a regular therapist? If mm -hmm, you know. mm -hmm. yeah. All right, because when when you go to a regular therapist, you go and you sit down and you talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, you do, and it's it's a talking talking cure. That's what they <laughs> and really and and a lot of good work happens with that. So. Um, I can give you, I'll give you an example um, right. of a client who has had trauma and this, this is not unusual with trauma. Um, sometimes with children and sometimes people just with trauma in childhood. It's very, very hard to talk. And um, a client will come in and um, I'll say, all right, um, what, do you want me to know about you? And um, when we hit a roadblock, um, which has, which happens, I, a client might say, I, I don't know how to say, I don't know how to explain it. And um, so we start things off by saying, well, let's just get a piece of paper. Let's not try to put words to it. Because trauma really doesn't stay in the, in the part of the brain that has words. It's in feeling and, and vision, you know, in that part of the brain. So I said, let's get the piece of paper out. Um, what kind of colors does this feeling have? What are you feeling right now? What kind of colors? What kind of shapes? And I'll just let them do that. And, and when they're, they're done, when they feel done, we'll take a look at it. We'll talk about it. I might ask them questions about it. I might have my own thoughts, but the thing is, what, what does it open up for the client? Oftentimes, I mean very often, when the client starts drawing, they start talking as well. And they'll start saying, well, and then I remember this and, or that, you know, and, and, and then the talk will flow. Another approach to it too would be, after a client has told me their story, I will be listening and trying to hear themes and um, connections. Um, and so I might ask them, well, um, would you be open to doing a drawing? Um, and let's take that event that you talked about and draw it out with all your family members there. And of course, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect or pretty or anything. Stick figures is fine. It's accessing the creative part of the brain that opens, opens up the thought and the process. Does that help? That some yeah, yeah, so you also mentioned ecotherapy. Mm -hmm. so, so say a little bit more about that. You, you said something about going outdoors and creating, right. creating art outdoors. Right, right. Well, a huge part of um, self-care during these times, but also helping to reduce anxiety and to um, increase mood, positive mood, is going out in nature. We, we heard that on, over and over again. Um, but oftentimes the, the clients that I get have difficulty 
um, changing their own mood to reducing their anxiety. It, it, it runs away from them. So what we'll do is go, I call it a, um, a talking, a walking session. We'll do a walking session. Um, we'll go to an adjacent park. We're practicing deep breathing, being in the moment. When you're in nature, it's, it's hard not to be in the moment. It's, it's, it's easier to kind of get out of one's head. So we'll be out in nature. I will have a directive of um, look for something that just strikes your attention. So I help their um, focus to be on what's going on around them. And um, then maybe gathering some things or some ideas or things that were seen in the park come back and create art from that. And it might be something that's in the background that will deteriorate made of leaves and rocks and sticks, or it might be something that's collaged in the studio or something that's sketched on site, um, but a way for the client to have the experience of nature and then internalize it and um, learn skills for managing the mood and um, reducing anxiety um, and homework will be to continue taking walks mm. or looking at nature or um, this this kind of thing to help if this is one of the goals that the client has you know to to have uh, uh, more control over their their mood and their anxiety level so one of the questions i had was about your transition into into becoming an art therapist. Um, it sounds like you've been an artist for a very long time. What um, what prompted you to make? Were you were you also a therapist at the same time, or or was it was it something that prompted you into moving into taking your art in this direction? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's. Um... <clears throat> Life, <laughs> life happened. And um, as has happened so often with clients who come to me, um, I was an artist, you know, my, my whole life. I, I have my degree in, in um, Master of Fine Arts degree. I worked uh, five, five years in commercial art studio, Al Duggett Studio. And I also worked my own artwork. I taught for 15 years um, in the Kent School District. And um, I've always been drawn, and that's why I moved from um, commercial art to um, teaching because I wanted to work directly with people. It's always been important to me. I wanted what I did to Im directly impact other human beings. It's just, I just needed that, you know. And um, well, um, as it turned out, I ended up coming down with a, um, um, arthritis to the extent that I could no longer teach and was counseled to consider art therapy. It seemed a perfect synthesis of my teaching background and also my background as, um, as an artist. Um, and I did not know what journey I had signed up for, <laughs> but five years uh, later, um, who of us would do half of what we did if we actually knew what it would, what it would take to get there? <laughs> I, I don't, not too many. I know I would. Um, yeah, but now, um, five years later, um, with, with my degree, I'm able to uh, work with people with art. It's different. It is not like teaching at all. Um, there's, there's a lot that my teaching background has helped me in being um, an effective art therapist. But I did spend a lot of time when I was in graduate school for my um, degree for mental health counseling with art therapy, um, unwinding and setting aside and teasing out um, the educational background in my mind 
and my tendency, you know, my understanding of teaching and that relationship, that dynamic is completely different mm -hmm. um, with the client than it is with a, um, with a student. But there's, there's overlap because I care deeply for my students and I care about them as individuals and I wanted them to grow and what they produced in the classroom was not not important compared to who they were and you know and their well-being but you know it still is not the same thing it's, yeah yeah um, so I, I noticed um, uh, so you, one of the things you mentioned as you were introducing yourself was was your um, your history um, with the, the or with Orthodox Christianity and I was wondering in terms of because that's a very um, in terms of art that that is a, 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 a faith tradition that is deeply imbued with iconography mm -hmm. and I wondered if this current series that you're working on has been at all influenced by that because when I look at particularly the the, the two bird uh, images that you were showing in the and the the halo sense that's mm -hmm. very there's very um, there's a lot there that is sort of that you would find it's certainly if you go to like the um, the Coptic or the uh, mm -hmm. Ethiopian Orthodox mm -hmm. um, churches you would find a great deal that is reflected in that right yes um that's what it drew me into the church in the first place was yeah. this not just the symbolism but the mysticism yeah. this is something that's always been something um that's been a core of my my um personality is uh, the mystical experience of of um, um christianity or faith um and um, though I am no longer active, the symbolism, I think for artists, um, um, surrealism, other forms of art where the symbols are so profound and strong, it's, it's, it's huge. And, um, and as I mentioned that the series um, weaves and ties all of these elements together. Uh, yes, there is that sense the, the 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 genesis of the halo <laughs> is definitely I, I i can't deny that that ties into that um but for me it was so um um poignant and and um empowering to take the idea of halo that is holiness and i feel that um as a individual i feel that with all of us, all of us together, dancing our hand in hand with ancestors and with those who aren't even born yet. They're the glow of holiness of that. What is so painful nowadays is that we do not um, appreciate and value um, us, each other, like we should. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it's such a root of so much of what's going wrong today. Um, but to take the images and the symbols and um, the motifs from Africa and to create halos for each one of the paintings, each of them having different meanings, um, it was, you know, just the, the perfect way to express all of these these concepts all at one time and uh, um so there are there are a lot of different um different motifs in each painting and they each have you know a significant meaning and they've joined together for a particular reason um hopefully after covid i will be able to have my one woman show and get everything up all at one time because that was that's was my goal in starting the series is to finally one time in my life have a enough work together done at one time to have one woman show um well i know you had also um at at one point fairly recently talked about uh, making the um 
the drawings themselves available and I, I know you had mm -hmm. them on your screen a minute ago mm -hmm. to have them available as uh, uh, options where people could could use them themselves where you just had the outline and then they could create their own color combinations and do mm -hmm. their own coloring if you will um, is that something you're still pursuing of, of essentially creating a, a, a coloring book of these right. uh, mandalas? Right, right. So what I envision is um, I've, I've, I've done the paintings. Now, launched from the paintings are the um, mandalas, which are halo mandalas. That's what I'll call them. They're halo mandalas. They're based on all the halos that have been created out of the African motifs. And some of them are Coptic, you know, as you said, and there's even uh, Islamic, there's all kinds of different motifs because Africa is so varied, right? Right. <laughs> and, um, and turning each one of them into um, an adult mandala, halo mandala. And yes, so people can color them in um, and as with images that are afrotropic, <laughs> right? Just leaning, you know, have uh, um, a cultural connection and a cultural meaning. Um, and so I hope um, to have that ready, to have that, um, the adult coloring book ready to have some rendered ones that I have that can be easily reproduced, you know, as, as prints. The paintings themselves, I don't know how they could be reproduced because of the technique I used on them. I'm open for suggestions, but um, apart from hand painting a lot of books, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, what would be the way, best way to go about that. Sure. So yeah, I want to use these concepts in different ways and in different modalities that people can actually hold and walk home with. Wonderful, thank you. I, I'm looking forward to that, by the way. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to coloring those <laughs> myself. So, um, and they would make great holiday gifts. <laughs> for, right, right. For there's there's twenty. There's well, there, there's more, but there's twenty of them total. I think that's a nice yeah. number. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's a nice set. It'll make a nice set, and they're they're um, outsized. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, uh, if you want to um, stop your screen share, that way we can uh, let folks, if they want to show us their, uh, their drawings that they've made during the, while well, we've been chatting, I'm hoping folks have been creating their own little um, response to your, to your prompt. Um, do we have anybody who wants to, to do that? I, I can do it. Am I heard? Yep. Yes. You're, you're right there. We see you and yeah, hear you. I, I can start off with that. I'm looking at the image. You bring that image up again? The symbol? Yeah. Here, I'll get it up here. I think it was the, there yes. Is. Yeah. When I saw that, it says respond to that image. As I looked at it, I kind of felt a sense of strength to it, a sense of uh, protective feeling, uh, unlike a shield, a gate, something protective. And that's what I, I kind of like, watched it for a while, and it looks like it could be parts of a specific type of full gate that might be protecting something very important. And just looking at the swirls, I began to just kind of swirl and do some things. I can show you that if that comes across of what I've done. Okay, Sherry, you want to turn off your mm -hmm. screen share? You can focus on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is... 
And then I created, mm -hmm. uh, using some of those swirls and some mm -hmm. of those, uh, trying to add as much strength to it, like I feel an iron, heavy iron type of uh, protective shield game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are the, uh, it just sort of, as I'm doodling and, and feeling that, I began to use that and keep, I kept adding uh, strength to it, but yet still kind of kept the, the rhythm of the flowing lines as well. And that, uh, so that sort of drew me in that direction as I looked at that particular image. I just felt a sense of strength, a sense mm -hmm. of a protective shield of sort. Thank that, you, Al. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. It gives me uh, chills, the, the combination of gait and strength and protective. Yeah, community. Wow. Powerful images, yeah. Anyone uh, else? Yeah, I have something too. I have to change my screen um, to to do that. Okay. Uh, but well, maybe somebody else can go while I fool with my settings. Um. This is Maria. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like that you said there's no wrong answer. <laughs> a wrong image but when I, I looked at that I, I thought of I saw myself in the center and I don't know how much of this oh wait I need to turn off my background just a second um, I, I vision myself in the center so can you see this at all yeah, yeah pull it yes, back. yes, yes. Pull so it back. I kind of did the um, image itself mm -hmm. and then the dot in the middle is kind of me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then just kind of all the forces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or things that impact me mm -hmm. one is you know family one is work and i put the dollar sign because i only work because i need money <laughs> <laughs> there's so many more things i'd rather do i put community mm -hmm. and i love trees and when i think of you know i, I think of community outdoors protecting it um i spent probably two and a half hours this morning just sitting in my yard just watching the birds that sort of thing mm -hmm. um the other is goals things that i want to do i'm going to travel more and that sort of thing but then there's all this the cyclical so the arrows kind of represent how everything overlaps and impacts the other and they're all connected and then family i did the little birds just my grandma she's no longer with me but she's like my strength but the family is the largest sorrel mm -hmm. because and it's most complicated we have mm -hmm. a lot of different uh what can i say challenges with family mm -hmm. um, we don't choose them but they're most in our lives and you want to deal with them i mean i put a heart there because you you love them but mm -hmm. sometimes that's difficult <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. I, I like the, the image. Um, I'm looking forward to your artwork and I do plan to buy some for gifts, especially okay. since you know, a lot of us are in and about and yeah. I already have the colored pencils and paints and that sort of thing. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, thank you, Maria. Mm -hmm. Esther, we see you. Okay. Um, well, I did too. I took um, part of the part of the image. Let's see. Oh, hmm. Oh, I think I know what's wrong here. Oh, maybe some. <laughs> I think it's uh, the virtual background. Yeah, turn off the virtual background. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm, mm. So it's the little arrow next to stop video. Oh, the little arrow next. Oh, I was going into settings. Oh, okay. What's the shortcut, Lola? So right next to stop video, there's the little up arrow. Click on that little up arrow. Of course, I don't see where it says stop video yet. Um, at the um, bottom. Oh, right? oh, oh, my screen is a little different. Okay, I just said stop video. Well, oh, I no, there's a little arrow next to it. You want to click not on stop video, but on the arrow next to it. Um, well, on my screen, there is no arrow next to it. Uh, um, and how? <laughs> okay, next person till I get this straightened out. 
Okay. Jay? Okay. I am ready. I didn't draw one single solitary thing, but I certainly, by looking at that image, I could visualize in my own mind, if I were to draw something, what it would look like. So I can articulate it and explain it. But I do want to say one thing about the art therapy is that, um, there were a couple times uh, at the workplace where it was so stressful and mm -hmm. I did have just a little kitty art book. I mean, that's what I had available to me. And if I just stopped mm -hmm. and colored in the line, just let everything else go and colored, it's so soothing and mm -hmm. therapeutic mm -hmm. and relaxing. Mm -hmm. And um, what you were talking about, people coming in and they're not able to really articulate. Maybe it was a trauma that occurred when they were younger. They're not able to articulate. And so you say, well, let's, let's, let's try drawing. Uh, well, that's exactly what they do with children uh, in the legal system that mm -hmm. have been victims. And, you know, they give them a pencil or crayons and a piece of paper. And, mm -hmm. and it really does help them when they start drawing. Okay, now, the image... I like things that are simple. <laughs> so <laughs> I looked at the image and what did I see? A butterfly. Mm -hmm. um, so with that image, um, I was in um, Dallas, Texas about two weeks ago. Uh, and we, do you know what I'm going to say? During the migration? Oh my God, Lola, you're so amazing. Oh. <laughs> you have known that oh you're so incredible i'll tell you yes. after you yeah i'll tell you after you tell me your story yes ma'am yes ma'am so i was in the dallas arboretum and i've just i've never seen such a beautiful arboretum before we were there for two hours and i'm gonna get to that image and and what i thought about and we still didn't get through it but yes lola I, we saw all these monarch butterflies, and I said, why are all these butterflies here? And they said, well, they're on their way to Mexico. And so when I thought about us and how fragile we are right now, mm -hmm. how fragile butterflies are, and particularly our monarch butterflies, but butterflies in general that are so beautiful to watch and to see and, and so i thought about this butterfly and us and our lives and how fragile we are and i don't know if anyone else has seen the movie but i really liked it um i like the movie melissa fent <laughs> so oh. i could just see Mo someone with that kind of power, just creating um, a protective uh, force around of trees and bramble around these butterflies protecting them. So that's what I was visualizing, mm -hmm. that we actually have forces around us that can protect us and watch over you mentioned the christianity protect mm -hmm. us and watch over us and keep us safe and where all of this hate that was mentioned before all this hate is swirling around us and trying to get in and trying to control us and trying to bring us down and trying to kill us but we're protected we're like in a cocoon so that was it <laughs> that's Great, that's wonderful, Jay. Yeah. Uh, and, wow. and the reason I know about the migration is I lived in Dallas, and twice oh. a year, yeah, twice a year, you will have millions, and I mean millions, of butterflies come through downtown Dallas. I come through the whole region um, oh to the point where uh, I actually was, you know, the revolving doors that that um, you have to go through to get into some buildings. I was actually mm -hmm. stuck in a revolving door with hundreds of butterflies. Oh my God. It's a remarkable, beautiful experience. It really yeah. Is. Yeah. yeah. But that's, I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated by all the different takes mm -hmm. on this one image. So Esther, are you all set? Are you ready to, to go? Well, I think what I could do is hold it up in front of my face. And if, if you all pin it, then you can uh, see. Is that working? No, well, not really. It's, oh. 
Yeah, I kind of see it. It's it, yeah, and of course, if it's in front of my face, I can't tell if you can. Yeah, see it it's not now. coming through. I oh, we can see it. Oh, a little bit. I see some of it. Yeah. yeah. Keep it there. Don't move it. <laughs> yeah. We is see. It, oh, go ahead. Is it round? Yeah, it's sort of oval shaped. Okay. Yeah, yeah we see it. We see it. Yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> it's kind of clipped out. You probably see it better. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I kind of started off with that. One of the, the shape in the middle kind of reminded me of a shield. Mm -hmm. And so in, um, you know, in protecting the communities, I mm. thought of sword and shield. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, other things, you know, you've got to have hands to hold things together in that little thing uh, under the bottom most thing is a bird and then um and then there's some vines and then um later i kind of thought that i i've been reading um a lot about moreau and stuff and so i sort of uh, i don't know if you're gonna be able to see this uh, abstracted that zoom 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 not coming zoom, through zoom. it's not coming through okay yeah. Um, yeah, that's not going to show. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, it was a line drawing, so that's probably why it didn't show. So. Wow. Those are beautiful. Thank you, everybody, um, for, for participating and for coming up with such wonderful concepts. Uh, so, um, do you guys have any questions for Sherry? Well, when's your co coloring book coming out? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it wasn't for my arthritis, <laughs> it'd be coming yeah. out sooner. But I, I am almost, I, all of them are drawn. I'm just inking everything in right now. And mm -hmm. then it's like I asked a question last time we met, I guess um, you and, and Al weren't here, but um, about where to have it printed up but i was given a lead there's a apparently an african-american print shop in in renton so i took a note to that and i'm going to look look that up so that's the next stage i'm just going to have it spiral bound you know mm -hmm. and um and have have it printed up and so yeah that's that's my next that's what i'm working on right now wonderful i've got have, like two-thirds of them drawn and we Completed. should definitely talk about having some of those available um, at the gallery. Yeah, when we go into our holiday season, that's wonderful. Oh yeah, yeah, that that would be great. Uh, I'd love to have them like you know shrink wrapped and. Great. One question I have is the you mentioned you were going to roll out this program to Seattle Foundation. How yeah. are you reaching out to other organizations or companies? Well, I uh, it like I guess a lot of things it just kind of evolved in not an expected way. Um, I had um, been dialoguing with my um, art therapy supervisor about um, potentially teaching a class, a multicultural class uh, at Antioch. And so um, I mentioned that to my friend who is um, um, head of, of diversity in her department at Seattle Foundation. And um, so she was like, oh, wow, we want that. So um, with her, with her um, encouragement, you know, I have, I've just gone ahead and started building this, this course. So that's kind of how I evolved. And, um, but we were thinking about, well, we want, we want to uh, pilot it before we, we um, present it to Seattle Foundation. And that's where MindSource Center came, came in. It's located in Covington. And um, so we'll, we'll pilot it with, um, and they're having issues, they're having, 
we're having issues with uh, um, diversity issues, um, the Black Lives Matter issues, um, and uh, and this stuff is 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 intense. You know, I mean, we're talking tears. You know, y'all know yeah. tears. Yeah, intense. Um, we have a lot of people who have become aware that this actually has is real and it's happening all at one time. We all knew, we've always known. Uh, our parents told us, told me, but for them, it's like all brand spanking. Yes, people are literally being legally lynched all the time out in the streets. Um, so it sounds like there there might be once you get it tested and you start rolling it out. I mean, I Maria, you know where on my mind went. It went immediately immediately to leadership tomorrow's art arts day. Mm -hmm. um, so there are I'm guessing so many places that would love to have an art based response mm -hmm. um, to the current era that we're era. in um, with all, especially if there is the potential of doing at least a portion of it online. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know how many of you saw that um, uh, Microsoft has told its employees, oh, by the way, you're not ever coming back to offices anymore. You're, you're working from home from now on mm -hmm. right. until forever. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably going to be a trend for mm -hmm. um, a lot of companies. Right. Um, yeah, this is tailored to after work. It needs to be people who um, choose to take it. Mm -hmm. okay. This is not a diversity 101 course. Okay, good. It is for those who have been awakened and now like, what do I do? I want to do something. I, I see this in myself and oh my God, it's that person. Because we, 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 we start up here and then we go higher. It's okay. not a diversity 101. It has to be volunteer. You have to be willing and interested to do that interior work and grow, growth. That has to be something you are willing to do. And. Uh, do you see this as something that could be offered with some organizations, um, EAP program, the employee assistant programs, as an offering? Right. I, I think it, it can be. In fact, when I started um, talking the course up to um, other colleagues and to uh, MindSource Center in particular, um, because they brought an issue to me and I said, well, you know, our course is going to address that. You know, our class is going to address that. And I have been getting this feedback. Oh my God, we need that. So I asked my, my friend, because we're going to co-teach this. And I think it's good to co-teach it. Absolutely. Um, I said, um, are you, I know we talked about um, Seattle Foundation, but are you open? We may get requests to present this course elsewhere. Are you okay? Are they okay? And um, she said, oh, no, yeah, they're fine. They know, they know I, <laughs> I'm, they're good with that. So, yeah, I, I already um, let my, my friend know that um, there could be a possibility that we'll get other requests. And um, so that's why it's four, four classes in the evening, um, once, you know, once a week with work in between with homework in between, but not onerous homework, but in inner work, you know, <laughs> and, um, and, and it doesn't end. This isn't something you get a certificate and then you check it off. Oh, I've done that now. No, this is not what this class is about. This class mm -hmm. gives you tools and techniques and you're supposed to keep, keep, supposed to keep doing them keep talking to each other, keep practicing it, and keep taking care of yourself. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not a, um, uh, yep, no. 
so so uh, particularly for the recording how do people get in touch with you um i have my website is www.birdsflyingfreestudio.com and I can be um, contacted through the website, but my email is birdsflyingfreestudio. Dot, not excuse me, birdsflyingfree at gmail dot com. Okay, so the studio is on the end of the website, right? But not on the not on the okay on right. the Gmail, right? Right, Lola. Yeah. Well, I have a quick question for Cherie before we end. No, go. No, we're not ending. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Cherie, uh, just kind of watching what you're doing. I know when you're working with your uh, clients and giving them, say, art projects, art images to do, how do you work with those? How do you interpret? What is, how does that work help you work with them from what they're doing? You see certain images they see. Mm -hmm. So you have to analyze that and... Does that, what does that give to you? Just how do you use those? Well, it's never out of context. So it's always in context for the person who's in front of me. Uh, the same image from different people would elicit a different response from me. You know, um, a lot has to do with where they are in their lifespan, you know, developmentally, all kinds of different things. So, um, it's, I like to think of it as sometimes like a dialogue. It's like we do a visual dialogue, um, a communication. So it's a form of communication. And our art and visual art is a form, is communication, right? It's a form of communication. Yeah. So I don't necessarily look at people's artwork and know things. I can suspect things. Um, it might give me questions to ask them. Oh, that's interesting that all of the windows don't have curtains. Or, oh, that's interesting. All the windows have curtains. Um, what do you feel about that? So it's not that I have an idea and I already know. It's all about opening it for the client. It's letting they them can, they're, they're taking their journey in there and they can pull it out. I said, there's a lot of, of red. Mm -hmm. What do you feel when you did that? Or I might ask them, I might look at a drawing and I see an area there. Stuff going on. I said, oh, tell me about that. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. That yeah. happens. <laughs> and then, then you say, well, well you know, if you had an idea, <laughs> what would it be? Yeah, that's really good. It helps and them it, kind of explain what they're well, doing. Well, that's it, because it's, it's in them. Yeah. All the answers are in, are in them. Yeah. I, ha I have to hold and believe as the counselor and a therapist yeah. that, they, that the answers are in, in there. And I'm here just to assist. I yeah. give them another piece of paper and say, okay, let's take that area that you don't know anything about and let's draw it real big right here. Yeah. And, you know, there's a certain point where I can't explain, even though I do it and I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. And if you're artistic or creative, you perhaps you have experienced it yourself. I'd be surprised if you did not. But there's those times when you're like, my gosh, it always surprises me. I say, here, do this, do it big. They do it big and things come out and emerge. And I'm like, well, yeah. all right, um, tell me about that. <laughs> and um, so that's what it is. It's a dialogue right. and, and it's a conversation, visual. And nothing is, nothing they do is wrong everything oh i i didn't mean to do that mm -hmm. <laughs> no it's all meant you know that's all meant to be there yeah and um so yeah and then oftentimes clients will have aha moments themselves um i remember 
this is a long time ago and not a real client, but a student, because we had to practice on each other, right? Mm -hmm. When we were in school. And I, um, I just had him do a landscape um, with his family members. And um, he did this huge chasm in the middle of the paper. And he had um, himself and over here, and he had his fiance over here. And, um, and I just looked at it and I said, that's interesting that there's this huge rift between you and your fiance. That's all I said. I just described what was down there. Uh -huh. And he looked at me and he was like, my word, yeah. you're right. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it can be um, very goosebumpy. Mm. Um, but that's because this is an area of the brain that in our society, we don't use, we don't rely on, we don't call to, but we all have it. We all have it. And it's there with wisdom, with insight, with healing, you know, and, and um, art, whether it's music, dance, drama, there's drama therapy, there's music therapy, you know, all that's out there, right? Um, art is, is our earliest form of communication as, as a species. And, um, and our first understanding of the world is, is the visual, you know, for those of us who can see. Um, so yeah, it's very, very powerful. It must be rewarding for you to see, say a patient or a client uh, come out of some of their problems, their anxieties, things like that, to just see them open up a little bit because of your guidance. That has to be rewarding to feel that you're doing something like that for someone. Your help. Well, yeah. Well, sometimes I tell them that, um, yeah, sometimes I'll have clients say, well, you're, you're just, you're just so wonderful. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I, I just hold a mirror up. I hold a mirror up and it's you, you're looking at, you're yeah. seeing yourself. That's what I'm doing. That's my job. Mm -hmm. And you know, the world is telling you all these horrible things, but you know, I'm holding this mirror up. So you see, the good and the strength that you have in there. And I'll just keep holding it up until you believe it. <laughs> and the other thing I do, I sometimes tell them too, I say, well, I'm, I'm a sure, sure pal. That's what I told my su supervisor. I think I'm a sure pal. I'm not a Sherpa. I don't lead the way. I'm just <laughs> a pal. I kind of go with you, you know, to help. And my experience, you know, when I said that I had came down with this arthritis and my world was kind of pulled out from underneath me, that's been um, uh, huge because not only did I um, lose my health or what I felt was my health at that time, I also lost five family members, five loved ones in a three year period. Mm -hmm. All of, you know, so my world was just, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, I crawled my way back through clay. Uh, okay. Um, and that's been a big, a cornerstone of my practice because people come to me with the world's blown apart, mm -hmm. with everything taken out from under them, like, and um, I'm like, yeah, yep, yep, um, <laughs> life. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sherry. This has been thank great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. Those are, this has been just Happy really to. enlightening. And thank you and for really coming. Yeah. Um, anyone else have any other questions or, or are we ready to wrap up? I just had a quick question. Uh, what is your biggest challenge with this work? I 
think at different times it would be different things, but um, the one, the technique, the, the, the logistics of meeting clients over the internet, especially art therapy. Um, I'm having trouble connecting with some clients and it's oftentimes an access and um, um, issue, you know, it's, it's um, they have intermittent Wi-Fi. I mean, that's just, it's, that's difficult. That's, that's hard. Um, on an interpersonal level, um, I, I think that um, dealing with hearing issues that are and views, worldviews that are wildly different from my own in my practice. And I've worked very, I've had to work, do some work on that. And not everybody does. Some people say, well, I think you should go to a different counselor, but um, it's been worth it to me because I want to look behind the hate and the fear to see what's really going on. And usually it's, 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 you know, it's, it's fear, it's, it's um, doubt, it's, um, and, to, and to look at that. So yeah, that, those are the, those are the two things. Great, thank you. And do you think we should send our president your, your coloring book? <laughs> Uh, do you think it would help? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, wider heads than I have made it clear that, you know, he has a, he has a disorder. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is that um, you, you're you only going to get what you're going to get. Yeah. And um, it's, we have to look to the rest of us, us, the country, why he's there. He could not be there if it was not for too many of us somehow making that okay. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a big symptom. Yeah. And, um, he's, yeah, he is. And he has his issues and um, he would still have them if he were just by himself and nobody knew him. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's caused so much damage because it's been allowed and um well thank you thank you so much this has been really wonderful um thanks everybody for coming and participating thank you lola yes it's always yeah, thank you thank you yes thank you lola for inviting me and 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 um letting me kind of break in our new re-energized monthly meeting yes 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 oh. It's a, an absolute pleasure. Um, uh, the recording, hopefully, I will have it um, available uh, later today, and I will send you the link to it. I will send everybody who participated a link to it. Um, and uh, thank you. Uh, have a wonderful rest of the day. And um, thank you, Sherry, for the work you do. It's, it's you. precious and important. Um, you are an essential worker uh, on so many levels. So thank you for sharing yeah, your yeah, art you, and yeah. your work. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Bye. Thank thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Yeah, I'm still working on my picture. <laughs> good. Good. Keep it. Keep working on it. If you feel it. <laughs> uh, you recognize the sweater? I do. <laughs> Boy, you take very, very good care of it. That's, yeah, the coat of many colors. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Be seeing you. Over All right. Now.